Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our second lesson on theory of flight. We're going to talk about principles of flight and specifically how wings produce lift. Let's begin by talking about Bernoulli's theorem. And we have a Venturi tube here with a constriction in the middle. So Bernoulli's theorem is essentially a conservation of momentum and a conservation of energy theorem that energy in a system remains constant and as the velocity increases, pressure decreases. And so air over an upper surface speeds up and has a lower pressure because of the camber and a greater distance and lower pressure on the bottom surface creates lift because there is less pressure on the top than there is at the bottom. Uh, Bernoulli's theorem is often credited for 90% of the lift created with Newton's theorem, the, the remaining 10%. But I have a quick question. Why does air above the wing speed up? Now, if you talk to most pilots, they'll say, well, the air speeds up because there's a longer distance. Yeah, but still, why does it have to speed up? Just because there's a longer distance doesn't mean it has to speed up. Unfortunately, the explanation of lift that I just gave you is pretty much in all flying textbook, and unfortunately, it is wrong. That's just not, it's, it's a misapplication of Bernoulli's theorem. So what I just taught you, yeah, you got to know it for the test, but let's be honest, most pilots, the people who are writing these tests are not physicists. So if you want to end it here and just be like, I'm good enough with knowing this, by all means, just know this stuff and just kind of go with the flow. But I'm going to talk a bit about how lift is actually created and go into it into a bit more depth. Now, you don't need to know this, uh, it, but it is kind of nice to have a better understanding of how lift is created than what's usually spoon fed through. It's also a discussion of Newton's laws. Newton's third law for every option. There's an equal and opposite reaction and you have downwash pushing the air down, therefore the wing going up. Well, let's talk a bit more in depth about this. So let me ask you a, a few questions here. So if we have a wing, let's just draw a wing here. Okay, forgive my crappy drawing, but here's this wing, right? And so most people teach and say, oh, okay, well, the wing, air goes underneath here. Yeah, yeah, and that's correct. Yeah, it does do that. And then air goes up and around here, it comes down. And we have a greater distance along the top than we do at the bottom, right? Which is true, that, that is true. And because this air here, let's say this point right here and this point right here, well, they have to meet up at the same time here, right? And because they meet up at the same time, there's greater distance, that means it speeds up. But is that actually true? Well, no, who's to say that the air going on the top of the wing has to meet it at the same time? Well, nobody, that's just not what happens. And here, let me try to prove it to you. Here's a, I just drew you an airfoil, but let's just draw another supposed airfoil. I'm gonna draw something. here. Here, this is the new Hain GA35B airfoil, right? So I'm gonna to try to explain it to you the same way that I just expl falsely explained to you that other one, the air going underneath here, okay? And oh, look, the greater distance. Yeah, it has to go the greater distance. It has to meet up at the same time, right? And this point right here, and here, and here, and here. They have to meet up at the same time, the greater distance, it speeds up. So this, in theory, this wing, the bottom airfoil would be uh, really good, right? Well, no, obviously you're looking at this going, no, that, air, that airfoil will never fly. And for, correct reason. No, it will not ever fly. And so here's the reason why. When we talk about Bernoulli and it being a conservation of momentum uh, equation, what it is is a conservation of momentum in streams lines between this point and this point. This parcel of air right here, the momentum will be conserved in this right here. That equation never applies to air along different streamlines. This point does not need to have the same amount of energy or momentum 
as this point down here. They are part of two different streamlines. So while Bernoulli serum is absolutely correct, and it's very correct, and it's often, or it's pretty much always applied in Venturi's, where you're measuring along the same streamline, it never applies to different streamlines, such as a wing. So let's say if we have a Venturi here with a constriction, this is a Venturi. I'll draw here, the streamlines here. Let's call it here. If we look at it, this momentum will be conserved here, and this will be conserved here. But it's not like this is going to be the same as this. That's just absolutely wrong. Okay, so that's a start, and let's uh, continue on the subject a bit more. Let's look at an actual airfoil. You'll notice the air comes here. Some of it goes over the top, some goes on the bottom. And you'll notice here, these are uh, 10 millisecond, uh, this is a computational fluid dynamics model, I think, 10 milliseconds. Um, you have this kind of along the streamline, this packet of air, just so you can see. And you can see it's actually quite a bit faster over the top of the wing. So it, it actually reaches the trailing edge before the parcel of air from the bottom of the wing considerably before it accelerates, but it doesn't need to meet the bottom parcel of air at the same time. And so if this wing was still, let's just say the wing was still, what would end up happening is you'd have the air going around here. Notice how it's going faster in the top than the bottom. And it'll go around the bottom and it'll circulate. And this is actually called circulation. Now, because the wing is traveling through the air, the air never actually goes around the bottom, around the top. But if it was still, this is mathematically what would happen. Now, if you've ever taken vector calculus and you recall your vector curl, if we think of this circulation right here that I just showed you, uh, it kind of goes in here and mathematically, now I put, let's just say, a wheel right in here, okay? This wheel is not driving the air. Let, let me make it clear. This wheel is not driving the air but the air, the circulation, is making it spin this wheel, okay? This is called the vector curl. And we can mathematically figure out how much lift a wing is producing by, because it's proportional to how fast this water wheel, so to speak, spinning. Now, this is just an analogy. This is not actually how it happens. This is just a, a layman's explanation of the vector curl, which is denoted del like that times something, okay? But we're not, this isn't a vector physics class or a vector calculus class, so we're not going to get into that. But we are going to continue this just slightly, a bit more if you're still interested. Okay, so we just uh, discussed or introduced you to circulation. And now let's just talk about something called the cut of condition. So we have a airfoil here, and we have some of the air going up over here. Then we discussed circulation. Ideally, is what we call the front stagnation point right here. That's where the air splits off. Then we have the rear stagnation point right here. And in flight, it's kind of perfect uh, that the air actually will never come around the front here. It always the circulation will never come around the front. You'll always have a rear stagnation point. And the reason for that is because air generally doesn't like turning sharp corners. And this would be a sharp corner. And it, it just can't do that. And you will notice that you don't actually need a nice smooth trailing edge or even a leading edge for that matter uh, to satisfy the cut of condition. Because if you think about like those models that are made of balsa wood uh, that you buy at the local dollar store for $2, their wing is pretty much a rectangle. It's not a smooth curve at all. They just stamped it out of a 16th inch of balsa wood. Okay, let's say we want to quantify lift, and uh, this is referred to as, there's actually a number of different formula, but this is the uh, Kanazukovsky, I believe that's how to pronounce this guy's name, uh, theorem. So we want to write lift, okay, it's going to equal the airspeed V times, this is the dot product gamma, that's the circulation that, we're t that we've been talking about. Circulation, you can look this up more on Wikipedia. 
involves a line integral. I'm not going to get into the calculus of it. Times rho, that's your air density. Obviously, um, air that's more dense, multiply the span of the wing. S, we'll call it big S. Now, the one thing to remember here as well is we're only talking about flows in two dimensions. Uh, and even though this is, is kind of a step up from what you learn as a pilot, uh, lift is considerably more complex. Uh, there's all sorts of compressibility effects. There's three-dimensional effects, right? Because a wing is not just an airfoil. It, it, the air moves laterally, uh, laterally uh, in and out of the wing and forms vortices and things like that. But this should give you a bit of a basic understanding or at least uh, an appreciation for the complexities with how a wing produces lift. And people produce textbooks, hundreds of pages of length explaining why wings produce lift. So having a ground school that has three, four slides about the Bernoulli theorem and it's wrong anyway, well, it's not going to cut it. But hopefully you uh, will be a bit motivated to read up on this a bit more. I recommend you uh, check out a Denker See How It Flies book on, uh, it's in the link uh, below and you can see in the reference section. So thanks a lot. We'll just review quickly here uh, before getting into some uh, sample test questions. So let's make it easy for a review. Just to remember that the air is at a higher velocity and a lower pressure above the wing than it is below the wing. It should probably help you out quite a bit. Sample test question. Why does a wing produce lift? A, turtles. B, math. C, I have no idea. D, all of the above. Correct answer is all of the above. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. And if nothing else, you got a bit more interested in how a wing produces lift. We'll see you in the next lesson.